Uh, my name's Joel Hammond. I'm a 32 year old carpenter from Adelaide. Yeah, this is a bit about my story. So I grew up in South Australia, lived there my whole life. Grew up in a, in a, in a great home. Um, two brothers and a sister. Um, although my parents separated when we were younger, they both did a, a really good job, I, I believe, in raising us. And Yeah, so we grew up in a small country town outside of Adelaide. And uh, I remember probably in my mid-teens at some stage, see, we grew up uh, going to church. We were a pretty religious household. We had a, a great respect for God. And yeah, while I was there, my, my, my pastor of the church, he, he kind of took me under his wing and he... Um, he, he sat me down one day and he said, you know, I see something good in you, I, I see some potential and I'd love to mentor you and I'd love to be able to pull that, that good, good stuff out. And, and I remember he, he bought, it, bought me a guitar and um, kind of taught me how to, how to play music and I joined the worship team, eventually began worship leading, starting at youth. Took over the music at one stage, I was probably about 19 years old and I, I loved being involved with the worship team, I loved um, getting to know people and, and going through, working through issues with people and helping people and I suppose what my pastor was doing for me in mentoring me and pulling the dreams out of my heart, pulling the potential out of my life, uh, I decided that I want to do that for other people as well. He sort of set me up, started doing some Bible college, um, my correspondence so I could work full time and study part time. He eventually left the, the country town and moved to Adelaide and a couple years later I followed him down. Um, so I'd moved to Adelaide when I was about 21 I, where I met um, the girl of my dreams to be honest. I remember meeting her, a, a friend of mine um, asked, invited me to her church service and I went along and met this girl, Jo, and she kind of blew my mind. Um, yeah, it really just smashed me off my feet. And um, Our relationship started just uh, over the phone and we'd see each other during school holidays and, and um, that developed over the, the two years while she was working up there. She moved back to Adelaide where I eventually uh, got off my backside and thought I better, I better marry this girl before someone else does. And yeah, so by the time I was, I was 25 we got married, um, life was great. She um, came to my church, we both um, served on the worship team there. She sung, she's got the voice of an angel and it was good, really good. Um, the, our first few years of marriage in particular uh, had a dream one day of maybe having our own church and and um, I was still wa working full time, I had a great job but yeah, we were, we were heading in a good direction. I woke up one day and I'd gone through a couple of stints of, of depression through my early 20s and and I remember waking up one day, it wasn't never one of those things where you wake up and you're happy the day before and you're depressed the next day. It's kind of a slow, um, a slippery slope. But I remember one day thinking, far out, I think I'm going through this again. I was, you know, volunteering at church a lot. Um, even though I had a great mentor and a great pastor, I, I, I started to feel really burdened and to the point where I didn't really want to be around people anymore. During this time, I, I, I played soccer as well. I got, a, I got an injury where I, I ruptured the AC joint on my shoulder and I started getting really anxious the amount of work I had to do. I remember really struggling to, to sleep and, and I remember one night I thought I'm going to go take some painkillers and, and I did and it was um, Nurofen plus codeine and, and so I took them one night and slept like a baby. Um, so I, I took them the next and I, um, I didn't worry about the advice of the pharmacist who said don't take them for more than three days in a row. Uh, I took them for a few weeks in a row. I remember one day I decided not to take them and I was in a lot of pain. And it wasn't my shoulder anymore, I realised I think I'm hooked on these things. Then I had to try and stop and that was even worse. Suddenly my anxiety got worse, I started getting more and more depressed, I was pushing people away, arguments started with my wife. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it, was, it, was just a, it was just a bad, a vicious cycle. Uh, I started drinking as well on top of that, drinking to try and help sleep. It was tough because my, my pastor, my mentor, 
at the time was, was going through a stage in his life himself where he was struggling a bit and and so we had two broken people trying to work together and I let it get to me and and it got to the point where we sort of I guess we had a bit of a falling out and and my wife and I left the church. The problem with that though I, I gave up everything I was doing which kind of felt good but I gave up my dreams and what I wanted to do when I was older as well and it got really bad my drinking became extremely heavy to the point where I was drinking every night uh, which turned into a lot of arguments and fights my wife was concerned I remember my wife just spending days and day every day in tears just crying praying not knowing what to do knowing that she couldn't talk to me because I'd blow up about it one morning I woke up feeling really nauseous and I've, I made my way to the bathroom and I threw up and I threw up a lot of blood um, and this didn't stop. It happened over the next hour and to the point where I had lost so much blood in my body that I couldn't even lift my head above my own body anymore because every time I did the blood would drain out of my head and so I'd pass out. I remember waking up probably about an hour later in the bathroom in a pool of my own blood thinking, Fire, this is really, really bad. I need to do something, I need help. I remember getting to the stage where I couldn't breathe. I was, no matter how deep my breaths were, it felt like I wasn't breathing in oxygen. And uh, yeah, what had happened, I didn't realize, but this mixture of alcohol and painkillers that I was taking, uh, I had a massive stomach ulcer. It was huge and it got to the point where it ruptured an artery. And so my stomach, stomach was just filling up with blood and I was vomiting it all out. Um, the surgeons, the doctors all told me I was so lucky to be alive. I was really grateful afterwards. I, I thought, wow, God's given me another chance. And you'd think that would have been a big enough wake up call to realize I'm an addict and, I'm, and something needs to change. Um, but the truth is within probably about six to 12 months, I was, I was drinking just as heavily. I was drinking two liters of port a day, um, at least a bottle of whiskey. During the day, I was still working during this time, during the day I was having a pack of Nurofen Plus 30 pills. I didn't care whether I lived or died. I remember the 10th of April um, 2017, my wife's birthday. By the time she got home from work, I was passed out. I was, a, I was just on the couch, I was gone. I woke up about seven o'clock and I went into the kitchen thinking, fire out, I've got to get ready for my wife's um, birthday celebration. Just to a note on the desk saying, um, I don't want you there. Um, thanks for the crappy birthday present. So I just started drinking more and more and I remember getting a phone call from my mum. She tried to call a few times. Eventually I answered and she said, so I just called your wife and wondered what you did for her birthday, what surprises she had, and she told me about coming home to, to you being an absolute mess. And mum said, what are you gonna do about it? And I said, mum, I finally admitted I'm, I'm an alcoholic. Um, I, I, I gotta give rehab a shot, I gotta try it. I made the decision to come to 180TC, the amends, um, the Drug and Alcohol Rehabilitation Centre. Um, my mum had been speaking about it for a while. <laughs> I'd spent a lot of time isolated, I'd spent a lot of time by myself. Uh, what I did not expect though was to make friends. That was the last thing on my mind. I thought I was going to go through 12 months sober, 12 months without substance, and I thought that was going to cure my addiction. It wasn't until I got here and after a few months that I realised, okay, I'm free. I'm, I'm not drinking anymore, I'm not taking pills anymore, I'm not doing any of that. But I had so many more addictions than I first realised. I, I was addicted to insecurities, I was addicted to um, self-loathing, self I was addicted to bitterness and addicted to self-pity and um, I was addicted to, to giving up. And so my addictions went way deeper than the substance I was taking. I realised my mind was in a way worse place. And it was, one of the best things was making friends here. 
um, getting to know some of the guys that have gone through their own troubles, their own, their own stories, um, seeing the gifts, seeing the talent, seeing the heart behind some of the guys here. And there was something special about guys coming um, each and caught up and locked in their own prison, in their own mind, but coming together where we could encourage each other and talk to each other and pray for each other and um, go to church together. We live with each other 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These guys became more than friends. They seriously became brothers and it was not what I was ex expecting at all. As far as the substance goes, that was gone. That addiction was gone. But suddenly I started to feel life again. I started to feel alive. I didn't want to be by myself. I wanted to be around people. I started to realize why I wanted to get involved with ministry in the first place. Because I started to fall in love with people again. It was my love for people that wanted that that, um, that was the catalyst for me to want to get involved with ministry. And falling in love with people again was the best thing that happened. It was wanting to help people, wanting to see other people do well. Over the past 12 months, the relationship between me and my wife has, has gone back to like it was. We have, haven't been this close in, in years, um, which has been great, as well as with my family, um, building trust back up again. And we've just been given so much. I've been given so much. I, I don't deserve any of this. God has restored my hopes and my dreams. He's, he's shown me that he had never given up on them all along. It was me that had given up on them. And he's believed in me this whole time. Part of me now is so grateful I've even been through my addiction because I'm so glad I've, I've got to spend the last 12 months here where I've been challenged. I've been smashed to bits, I've been stretched, but I've been molded, I've been reshaped, and it has been great, and it has been something I would never take back for anything. My goal now is I wanna spend the rest of my life paying it forward. If I can encourage one person to come and do 12 months here, um, this will all be worth it, and I don't regret a thing.